Hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Motorsports Digest. I'm going to start at, start this whole episode out with saying, screw the LED lights for this all-star race. They're stupid. Uh, I'm already over all the hype about the race. I don't like the quarter numbers. I don't like the LEDs. And the choose cone, I, I don't get it. The what? The choose cone. You've not heard about that? No, what, what is the choose I'm cone? I'm pretty sure it's like, Hang on, now I've got to find the find the video for it. <laughs> but yeah, the choose cone is like um, pretty much you have to be committed or whatever. Oh, um, I will say though, with the LEDs, if I wanted to watch fucking neons under a car, I would go and down watch to cars. <laughs> I would watch cars like Grand Theft Auto, or go on the west side of Indianapolis. <laughs> I no stop it stupid I don't know there's a whole bunch of controversy over the the choose cone so if there's controversy over it I don't like it <laughs> I'm a simple man I don't mind the quarter panel numbers but I see I I don't like it I feel like it's going to take a a lot away from the car and the sponsors well, it's supposed to be so your main sponsor can have more space on the side of your car. I don't care. They deserve the quarter panel. The numbers are on the door. I, I don't care. I I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody that disagrees with that. <laughs> get it. Um, but but I, the LEDs, it's only going to be the people in the all sorry. So, like, Clint Boyer, you know, if Bubba Wallace makes it in, he's going to have one. On that. Which... Bubba Wallace is only in there because of everything that's going on right now. Exactly. <laughs> the only reason Bubba Wallace is leading the votes is because of all the controversy around his name. And he all of a sudden, all these uh, Black Lives Matter people are big fans of NASCAR, so they've all voted for Bubba Wallace. Yeah. Multiple drivers, like Clint Moyer, who deserves that position. Absolutely. And Eric Almarola. Um, I think Ryan Blaney is up for vote, and Ryan Blaney doesn't have that many votes at all. Right. I mean, there's three drivers who deserve it way more than Bubba Wallace. Absolutely. It's just, I don't know, this whole all-star thing, all-star vote, it's all going downhill. You know, it, it's yeah. not the same. I mean, I do like that they switched the track. Yeah. Because Bristol is going to open up a lot more opportunity for lead changes and big wrecks. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that it's in Bristol because, one, Bristol's in Tennessee, right? Yes. The That's a party city. That's going to be – Yeah. I mean, that gives a lot more marketing to Nashville, which I think is good because they need it. Yeah. Especially with COVID. We're going to throw it back to this past weekend, July 4th weekend. Um, we had the triple header. So we had IndyCar. That race was absolutely phenomenal. Scott Dixon, the Ice Man, won his first Grand Prix at Indianapolis. I'm glad to see it wasn't a Penske car. Yeah. Thank yeah. goodness. So now the only thing that we have to hope for is Penske stays out of the, uh, the victory circle and August. <laughs> Dixon is my guy, dude. I, I was so happy to see that. Yeah. One. And and Ray Hall, he was in second. Connor Daly was in third. Those two, those two drivers have not been, you know, top, top five, top eight, you know, top ten, whatever. Yeah. They have not been running that good. No. With in several several years, so. But to have them running uh, Dixon first, Ray Hall second, and then Daly third, I know that's not what they finished. But to have them running in that order was – that was – I was so happy. I was like, holy cow, you know, Connor Daly's in third. Yeah. I, he, he's, he's my guy. Yeah, that was a good race too. It was. It was, it was very awesome. Like, was, I don't think there was – well, Oliver Askew backed it into – the last turn coming onto the straightaway. Other than that, I don't think there was any other cautions. But it's a road course, so I mean, it was it was eventful. Right, it was lots of uh, 
jostling on the restart. I just like how they bottleneck it down from three wide into turn one <laughs> without any con contact. So but that was awesome. Yeah. Then July, well, right after the IndyCar race, we had the Xfinity race. Yeah. Only that was awesome. That was amazing. That was awesome. We need more yeah. more of that. Yeah, I know. That was – that's a great I, – I love the road course. I'm so happy that they yeah. let NASCAR put the Indy, uh, the Xfinities on there. Absolutely. And now Roger Penske is looking into – well, since he's the owner of the NDT IndyCar Series, he is looking into more double headers, like NASCAR and IndyCar together. I, I think that's, that's awesome. Really good. And, and it, it'll be good for the sport, too. You'll have a lot more – NASCAR fans, vert, you know, looking into IndyCar and vice versa. One thing they were talking about was a lot of those IndyCar drivers that were at the track still the next day and all that were talking to the Cups drivers. And being Absolutely. Like, Here's what the track was like yesterday. Um, and then they were even talking to the Xfinity drivers before the Xfinity yep. drivers, telling them, hey, going around this turn and such and such. And it was – Yeah, it was awesome. Good. You know, you get to see those – Two sports come together and as one. Yeah. Um. That that race was pretty good. Uh, the battle for first within the last couple laps was awesome. Yeah. I think you had Cendric. I know you had Chase Briscoe, but there was somebody else. I forget. But that was awesome. They kept bumping each other. It was that was really cool. Chase Briscoe came out on top. He he won the race. And it, yeah. Oh, it was Justin Haley that finished second. So, yeah, Chase Briscoe and Justin Haley finished one, two, both Indiana natives. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah, uh, glad to see an Indiana boy win the inaugural uh, road course because Jeff Gordon he was an Indiana guy and won the first Brickyard. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I was super happy to see that he was from Indiana. I mean, he yeah. won the road course so. That was awesome. Did you know that had been a big thing for him as an Indiana boy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because that's one thing everybody looks forward to is, oh, is there an Indiana driver? He better Yeah, be. absolutely. And, uh, and th well, other than the fire that you had, I think it was Brandon Jones. Yeah, Brandon Jones. Other than that, I don't think there was too crazy of wrecks. No, yeah, Brandon Jones' car caught on fire. but Yeah. He's not having too much luck when it comes to Infinity uh -uh. right now. Hopefully, he, I mean, he, he has good luck in the uh, truck series right now. Hopefully, yeah. he can win Kentucky tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we speak it well. We'll, we'll get to the uh, Kentucky after yeah. <laughs> the July yeah. 5th. After all the fifth, triple the hand sanitizer. What, what's, it, what's the race called? The Big Machine Hand Sanitizer 400. <laughs> that was owned by Florida Georgia Line. So yeah, that race, lots of moves, lots of lead changes. Yeah, and lots of heavy impacts. Yeah, lots. Yeah, Eric Jones destroys his car. Yep. Um, and then you had the very last lap, right? I think it was yeah, Denny Hamlin right on yeah, turn one. Over overtime, Denny him. Hamlin's car just shreds a tire and goes right into the wall. Yeah. I, my gut dropped whenever I saw that. I mean, I, if if I could watch a Harvick and Hamlin battle every race, I'd be okay with it. Yeah, because it's two great drivers. Absolutely, and they'll go they were, they were going for a lead, and you know they're clean. They were neck and neck, and then he just couldn't win. But and then we had the accident on pit road. Yeah, oh, my God. Uh, Ryan Blaney's right rear tire changer, Zach Price, was Strong. transported to the hospital, and he's going to be out for three or four months. So I haven't seen anything as to, you know, what his condition is or what happened. Well, as soon as, as, soon as he got off of pit road, he was like, oh, I'm fine. I can keep you on. No, you're not. Right. You couldn't stand up on your leg. You're – yeah, he when you get hit by a NASCAR going even 40 and that's, an hour, and his mentality is kind of you know, 
what makes me like him and the Ryan Blaney team now because he, even though he was hurt, he was still ready to push forward, keep fighting, you know, get that number 12. Yeah. yeah number 12 into the lead. So, but that whole bottleneck and what, whatever happened on pit road was yeah i don't it was I, absolutely crazy i don't know who caused it but it, it looked like somebody i don't know probably ricky stanhouse jr <laughs> probably, probably was ricky god damn it ricky um no but um there you know there was a big event that happened uh over the weekend for uh nascar with jimmy johnson yeah wasn't able to run the brickyard due to a positive case of COVID. Um, okay, but this is my this is my thinking on it. It wasn't it if you had COVID, you had to self quarantine for two weeks, correct? Yes. This dude has only been quarantined for what you know seven days, not even seven days, yeah, like four <laughs> or five days. Right, and now he's. Well, going to be back in a race car. He got he got tested twenty one time in the morning, and then twenty four hours later he got tested, and they both came back negative. Hmm. So they said he was fine. Um, his wife is still being self quarantined. His yeah. kids being self quarantined, or well, forced quarantined, I guess you could say, because you know kids aren't being self quarantined. But right, um, yeah, he he will be racing Sunday at Kentucky. So this whole week, so starting yesterday, were they is the whole Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, are they all at Kentucky? Yeah. Well, yesterday, you you watched the race, right? I didn't even know there was a race. I I, I didn't even know it was a Thursday night race. I I will be honest. I was just watching. I didn't know we were going back to midweek races. So yeah, I know. On me, but uh, big wreck. On lap one. Yeah, big wreck on the lap. Oh, wait, what in the hell is going one. on? Are you talking about lap one? Yeah. I wouldn't say it was a big wreck, but yeah, it was. It was like, all right, you could tell that track wasn't wasn't prepped because prepped. Yeah. I mean, as soon as they came around turn one, I mean, you could see the dirt coming off of the track. Yeah. No, the the big wreck was what the last lap. Yeah. Yeah, Justin Allgaier was uh transported to a local hospital yeah and his state but they from what it, i could find is yeah they said it wasn't for his uh for what happened happened in the wreck they said it was afterwards he felt something and then he got transported to the hospital gotcha which it, it's weird because then they were like brought up the wreck in the press release and i'm a little confused there but yeah <laughs> no yeah that was a big wreck um i mean at so, least it was the last lap so you didn't have i mean i would have liked to see over time yeah, you know, it was crazy I, I was watching the highlights and i was like i was like damn you yeah know? <laughs> austin cinder got his first win of the season so. yeah so congrats to austin cinder um well yesterday i'm just gonna go ahead and tell them the good news okay uh, yesterday, Xfinity driver uh, Kyle Weatherman was supposed to be on the show, but we didn't know that there was a midweek race, <laughs> so that kind of had foiled the plan. So we're we're looking and hoping for Monday. Yeah. And uh, I've got somebody that I'm well, I'm talking to somebody to be in the works on the show, and that's going to be a big surprise. I'm going to keep that one a secret. Yeah. That one's going to be a big surprise. It's going to be a milestone for Motorsports Digest as our little podcast project, you know, grows. Which, if you guys don't follow us on Facebook, go ahead and give us a follow and a like and subscribe on YouTube. Everything that goes on, post all the news there. Absolutely. All the news from all sports, all motorsports. Everything but the motorcycles because – Yeah. MotoGP, we don't really uh, – <laughs> Yeah. Because um, – So, we've got Kentucky all week long. Yeah. Sunday – well, actually, is it going to be a Sunday race for the Cup or Saturday? No, it's Sunday. Sunday? Yeah. My question yeah. for you is who do you think will 
coming first. On Sunday? Yeah. Not knowing what all this uh, – the lineup is, so. Well, the lineup's already been released. Really? Yeah, Kyle Busch. I'm behind. <laughs> Kyle Busch has the poll. Kyle, oh, God. But I don't think he's going to win it. I really don't. Um, I think you're going to see – you know, I think it's going to be a tough fight for Denny Hamlin, but I think he's going to come out and he's going to win that race or at least win one of the stages. Yeah, absolutely. JGR does, does pretty good on those yeah. one and a half miles. I think it's a one and a half mile track. I'm pretty sure. I think it is, but um, I don't know. I, I'd like to see a JGR driver just win it, to be honest. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't mind seeing – Hendrick Motorsports, whether it's Alex Bowman, you know, mm -hmm. William Byron, Chase, or maybe like even Jimmy Johnson. Small, I'd like to see a small driver actually win. I, I you know, I want, I don't yeah. want to see one of these big teams win. I want to see some crazy shit happen where a small driver wins it. You know, yeah. um, that, that, would be, that would be cool. Like Justin Haley or yeah, Corey LaJoy or Joey Gase. Yeah, somebody that you wouldn't think of winning. I want to see them win. But yeah. it's very unlikely to happen. So, Like I said, they need to invert the field, have I know. everybody up front. And that's, that's one thing. I really – they should. They shouldn't be giving these big teams the poll. Right. Okay, these big teams, they're going to – no right, matter – They have the money to succeed. They have the money for the parts. They have the money for all the equipment. They no can do it. No matter where you put those guys, they're going to end up in the front at the end Absolutely. of the race. Absolutely. Like – just give the the small drivers some time to shine. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, tonight though, tonight is the second Xfinity race. Yeah. And uh, you know, oh God, Noah Gragson. <laughs> dude, I I want him to win. I really yeah. want to see him win. And if he's there gonna be a battle between Chase Briscoe and Gregson. I'd probably go with Chase Briscoe. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean – Only because he's an Indiana native, and he's really talented. He is extremely talented. I won't – I'm. how long has he been in Xfinity? Do you know? Uh, I think since 2017, I think. So he's getting close to being, like, moved up if he keeps performing the way he did. Oh, probably. Hell, yeah. He'll probably either take a spot on Rash Fenway – or, well, no, because Roush Fenway is, I'm pretty sure, only a one-car team. But, well, who knows? He could possibly move up. I, depending on what his contract is, I don't know. But, yeah, you know, the 48 is available next year. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool to see him take over the – Yeah. You know, being an Indiana native. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And Johnson being – Gordon's old teammate. So I mean, yeah, you know, but um, that would be awesome. No, I do. Do you know is Kyle Busch running the truck race? Uh, my guess would be yeah. Yeah, I I don't want him to win if he is. I I want to see somebody else win it. I want to yeah. see. I wouldn't mind seeing um, Brandon Jones get another win back to back from Brickyard to. Not Brickyard from um, Pocono to uh, Kentucky. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see a truck race. At yes, that would be awesome. Man, that would have. That's what I was wanting, man. But maybe next year. Yeah. If you guys live in Indiana, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Lucas Oil Raceway. So yeah. they have announced an event for 2021 to. Uh, it's called Carb Night. It's the day before the 500, the Indy 500, next year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, I believe, it's going to be the ARCA series. Probably. Running there again. ARCA ran there this past weekend. Yeah. So, if everything is still up and going with Motorsports Digest, which yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't be. We are going to be there, and we are going to be broadcasting. So, live, live at that. So, we'll have our little table set up. Uh, I'm sure you'll still have the FJ so we can have an awning to sit under. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll have, our, we'll have everything that we need. 
But yeah, yeah next year is uh, Carb Night 2021. Yeah, um, Arca ran there, and um, you know Miss uh, Haley Deegan. I don't think yeah. she did very well uh, in that. They're race. only in it for the money because of her name. It's, but um, let me. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up real quick. I want to see who won that because I don't remember. You guys hear any noise in the background? It's my cats. They're jumping all over everything right now. Okay. Um, and I don't think there's much news in the NASCAR world right now involving Bubba Wallace. No, he. I don't think so at all. But, um, Chandler Smith. So it wasn't Haley Deegan. Thank God. Was it her teammate? <laughs> no. He drives a Toyota though. Yeah. But um, I hope we never see Haley Deegan in the uh, Cup Series. Uh -uh. She would just be another Danica Patrick. Hell yeah. I mean, Montoya. granted, Haley Deegan, she's fast, she can drive, but she is not. Never mind. I'm just going to. No, what All did right. you say? Next topic. Next topic. Um, <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, in other news, I guess we could talk about the IMSA July 4th race. Yeah. That was pretty cool. It turned into a night race, which I love IMSA cars at night. Who doesn't? Yeah. That was a good turnout. I forgot who won, so I'm going to Google that real quick. Yeah. It, looked like it was a definitely an eventful race. I'm pretty sure it was a one of the Chevys that won. But Okay, here we go. Oh, damn. Okay, hang on. Well, um if you did watch the Xfinity race, you would have seen that uh, Clint Boyer accidentally called up the wrong car thinking it was Noah Gragson. Had a whole conversation, and then the driver goes, do you know who you're talking to? What happened? Uh, Clint Boyer called up – was supposed to be Noah Gragson, and he called up um, – oh, God, who was it? Yeah, somebody else, but – Oh, he was in the booth. Yeah, he's going to pull up somebody. Oh, my gosh. Graxon. And they're showing Noah Graxon car going around the track. And they're talking about the um, traction compound and all this. And the driver's like, do you know who you're talking to? That's great. And the driver <laughs> just connect, And it was like, wow. Yeah, so uh, the Corvette Racing CARs won the GTLM class, so. But I can't find so um whatever name. The old, well, there is one thing that's going on with Bubba Wallace right now. Um the President Trump asking him Oh yeah. To apologize. Which in a manner of way I can agree with because one, Bubba Wallace, even after everything was cleared and everybody was like, Okay, it's okay, we understand it wasn't you, he brings it back up the um news thing and goes i don't care how long it's been there uh it was there and that's not right right and like but it's just a, a pull cord exactly. at the garage door and like everyone had your back bubba like you literally yeah. he just no, wanted some more limelight and some more yeah. fame but um, but then president trump even goes because president trump we know is a nascar fan and very vocal. Very vocal. Uh, goes, you deserve – actually, I think his exact tweet was – I can pull it up here. He, we, basically, he's asking Bubba to apologize. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, Bubba Wallace is just – keep bringing it up. Uh, 
and yeah, all of it is just, and like, I can see why President Trump would say that. I mean, you have attacked the fans basically after they all were like, we have your back, we're with you. Right. Um, and then, you know, you kind of made the drivers look stupid because they all had your back as well. Um, in so many of ways, you know, it, the drivers at least, you should be like, hey, I'm sorry that I made this big scene. You know, I, I don't. Right, and it's kind of like, uh, I feel like with everything going on, whenever all this happened, I feel like he was like, oh, you know, hey, here's the news. Let's get some more, more fame right now. Yeah. Let's, let's be in the news. Let's be the headlines for the week or weeks to come. Yeah. Which he's kind of dying out now after the All-Star yeah. race. I think he'll be. Uh... Yeah. After the All-Star race, it's just going to. Because he's going to make it in the All-Star race and he doesn't deserve it, but he's going to wreck out. <laughs> or he'll fail his uh, pre-race. Hey, they will never fail their pre-race inspections. Oh my gosh, I just can't with the LEDs. <laughs> I Man, think was, they're so hideous. I think it was cool how they unveiled it. You know, having Kurt Busch in Nashville just. Well, stri- that's what they they do that all the time. I know. It's for their, their burnout week or whatever. The fuck no, I think it's cool that he just kind of, you know, they blocked off Broadway and yeah, he fucking rolls in and just starts fucking ripping it, man. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to Nashville and uh-huh. like been on Broadway. It is, it's intense because like yeah. normally that road is packed. So I'm sure people were, I'm sure the taxi people were pissed off because they will just they have to find a detour. Yeah. Uh, it's it's an intense street. A lot of drunk people. Yeah. Um, I am gonna go back a little bit to uh, the July Fourth race. I've got to say, Harvick's paint scheme. Yeah. Is probably the most American one I've seen. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, and I. He won, it. so that's a that's a diecast. Everybody can pre-order at lionelracing dot com. Dude, I won't lie, I. I I went to watch the race and I didn't, but I watched like highlights from NASCAR. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of it, but then uh, my dad was like, "Oh, let's have a bonfire." I was like, "Okay, cool." So then he's running outside. He was like, "Danny Hamlin just ran into the wall," and then he was like, "Go Harvick!" So I was like, "Holy cow!" I'm running inside. I'm watching the last couple laps of the race, and then he won. I mean. It was a good race from... It was very good. Oh, um... Can't wait to see what this weekend will do. Eric Jones is a car wreck. Yeah, he smashed it. I think all the wrecks kind of looked identical. Like Eric Jones. Eric Jones is what? Intense. Like, if you're looking at side-by-side comparison pictures... They do. They were very similar. Totally same. But there was a fireball coming from Hamlin's car. Yeah. Um, for F1, Peter Alonso returns. Really? Fernando Alonso, sorry. I don't know where I got Peter at. Yeah, Fernando Alonso, I think, is going back with Renault. Yeah. For Renault. He won. So, he yeah. needs to stay in Formula 1. You know, I'm tired of everybody bringing the hype into the 500. Oh, my God, Alonzo's back. Cool. Yeah. He can't do anything. He's going to wreck in practice, or he's just going to fail an engine in the race. That's just me. So, uh, the top ten for Sunday is Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, Eric Almarola, Alex Bowman, Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Chase Elliott, Truex, and Matt Diabinetto. Dia Benedetto. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> well, we got an action packed week of racing. Uh yeah. just let us know what you what you guys think of the races in the comments. Uh Garrett and I will be doing a 
probably a more longer episode Monday with, you know, we've got Friday, well, today, tomorrow, and Sunday, those race and race coverages. So we're going to be bringing all the all the news and all yeah. the – And with it being motorsports, there's always news that comes out in the middle Absolutely. of the day. So. Let's just hope this this – these races stay action packed like yeah <laughs> last night yeah let's hope uh jimmy johnson can actually run in kentucky yeah hopefully get a top five finish or better yeah that'd be a sight to see maybe that's what he needed he needed to see somebody else in his car yeah he did say though he told um his team he said i'm not he said after this season i'm not completely done i want to yeah. run like big tracks, like Daytona and Talladega. That'd be awesome. He wants to run the Crown Jewels, I think. So. Yeah. Because I really – he wasn't happy that he didn't get to run. Right. Rickyard. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's a big milestone with everybody's – on everybody's hit list to win at. Yeah. You know, you've got the 500, Talladega, the Brickyard. Yeah. Because it's so monumental. Yeah. For and, every driver. And also – um, he's one of the ones who hasn't won at all four crown jewels, I don't think. Right. Um, which is Daytona, Talladega, Brickyard, and then uh, Miami. Well, if that, well, then I guess he has won at all of them. Has he? Yeah, he's got seven championships, baby. Well, yeah, he's got seven championships. Yeah, because he's won the two. He won at my first Brickyard, which was 2012. He's won the Daytona. Yeah, I think he did. He's won Talladega. I'm I'm sure. And then every. <laughs> well, no, I guess not every, but damn near almost all seven races at Homestead for the championship. Yeah. I'm trying to see what the tracks are. The Daytona 500. Coca Cola 600 and the Southern, the Southern 500, and then the Brickyard. The Southern 500, I don't think he's won at yet. I could be very wrong, but. Yeah, okay. Kevin Harvick is the one who just got his Crown Jewels win. Yeah, because yeah, he hasn't won, won at the Brickyard, I don't think. He won. Or no, it was Pocono. He has never won at Pocono. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he won, He was driving the number 29 Good Branch mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. Kyle Busch has a – almost has it. He just needs the uh, Daytona 500. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's going to be a few more years, buddy. Well, Kevin Harvick has it. Has a – has a crown jewel sweep, and so does Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. And the I thought he did. Yeah, the active drivers, Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick, both have a crown jewel. Damn. They're the only two? They're the only two that have the uh, all four. Man. Chase Elliott, what are you doing? He's not even on the list. <laughs> oh, man. Denny Hamlin's on it, though. Denny Hamlin? Hell no. He ain't. He's got a – I'm pretty sure he has a Dega, a 500. Yeah, he's got two Daytona 500s and then um, Talladega. Yeah, so he's he's missing what? The Brickyard 400 and what else? And the uh, – 7500? The Coca -Cola. No, Homestead. Is it, yeah, Homestead. Yeah. Which he could win at Homestead. Ain't going to happen, Chief. Well, he wouldn't win at Homestead this year because it's not the championship's not being held there. Yeah, being held at Phoenix. <laughs> well, if you guys like this episode, like, subscribe, show it to your grandma, show it to like your our Facebook page, do everything, and we will see you guys on Monday. <laughs>